to some malware threats and all that. But I just want to get your quick take on CrowdStrike because it's not really specifically an operational technology sure. yeah. kind of, uh, you know, cyber Good lesson security. Learned, yeah. yeah. I, will but I will talk through a couple of things. So the things that shocked me about that, meaning there's things that happened in the organization that allowed that to go out without appropriate testing, without appropriate kind of uh, verification. That's disappointing, and I know it's disappointing to them as well, and they're going to do what they need to do to fix it. But the real shock to me, going back to the 1980s with technology like Blue Coat and uh, McAfee ePolicy Orchestrator, we've had a history of technologies that get a corrupt signature update, and it impacts how that tool functions. So for 20 to 30 years, we have ensured that we have sort of a bake-in or a soak-in method where new signature updates are coming in, and they're sitting in a test environment that has mm -hmm. nothing to do with operations or production. And it sits there for a period of time, and then it moves into corporate business assets that aren't real-time operational assets. Then it moves into backup systems, and then it moves into actual production. So you are four to five to six weeks out, and if ever there was a corrupt signature, it would get replaced and fixed before you ever saw it, even in the slightest of impactful environments. What happened with this, I believe it was just generally more trusted technology and mm -hmm. the assumption of we want to take new signature updates in as fast as possible to better protect our systems. And we forgot what we've learned over 30 years that even with a trusted vendor, even with trusted providers, you still need to architect in resilience. No one should have taken these signatures straight into a process environment that left millions of people stranded, impacted sectors. That is at fault to the asset owner operators for allowing that to occur. Trust, but verify, yes. Yeah, you, you're not able to with CrowdStrike. If, if you have it, it is kind of automatic. Um, but I, yeah, I agree with the points. I would say, um, look, just broadly speaking, when it comes to operation technology, we've always said, please don't take your same IT approach to mm -hmm. our OT environments. We've had a history of stuff like this happen, uh, to Tim's point. And so a lot of the things that we've done historically in OT has been more passive, more let's watch the network, let's monitor, let's do those things versus let's go make changes and, and, and adapt it or actively scan it and whatever. And what I'll say in this space is there's a bunch of companies now that'll come out and go, don't worry, we can safely do this. We can scan devices, we can make changes, we can throw agents, we can safely do it. It's, it's OT native, it's ready, it's okay. And I think there's just a lot of risk that people forget that they're taking on with that. And so these active changes and active scanning and all those active things, not saying don't do it, um, but realize that there is absolutely a resilience component sure. to this and that there's real risk that we have to think about. There is no, no such thing as a safe way to do it. Mm -hmm. If you have systems that are obligatory, like you have to, ensuring where you're putting those mm -hmm. and then not using them at all levels, same vendor, same approach, same technology, so you have some level of assurance that something is not going to come in directly, whether it's corrupt, whether it's intentionally malicious that causes some type of operational impact, that is on the asset owners to engineer and operate their systems in a way where that is not a risk. So uh, Rob, tell us about this, uh, you know, the eighth and the ninth uh, malware that have been recently discovered. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Foxnet was the different from eighth. Pipe Dream? Yeah, so Pipe Dream really is kind of an attack framework. It's by far the most extensible malicious software we've seen for targeting OT, um, and it is still a threat and can be used. I mean, there's no sort of like patch it away. There's no like yeah. fix it away. It's just a good framework that leverages the native functionality of OT environments. Um, Foxnet was something more specific and very tailored to a specific environment. It really doesn't have a lot of ability to be used at a bunch of different places. Uh, and it was used supposedly um, by a Ukrainian hacktivist group um, hitting a site in Russia. Whereas Frosty Goop was supposedly used by a Russian group hitting uh, a city in Ukraine. Um, both of them have lessons learned. You can look at it and go, yeah, maybe the malware is not going to be used again. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the tactics, the way the malware mm -hmm. accomplished what it was doing. What can we learn from that and apply in terms of prevention, detection, response, making our systems better against these types of threats? Um, I think the real takeaway, though, is we are consistently seeing more and more activity, more and more threats, more and more efforts by companies, countries, hacktivist groups, et cetera, to target these OT environments specifically with OT expertise. And so the takeaway shouldn't be, oh my gosh, here's this malware, it's so bad. The takeaway should be, it's another data point 
that adversaries are consistently targeting civilian infrastructure that can impact local communities. Yeah, you, you mentioned that Pipe Dream is an illustration of how um, uh, nation state actors tools are you know increasingly becoming sort of a, a, a way for say cyber criminals to uh, uh, use uh, or leverage in the OT mm -hmm. environment is that the same that we are seeing with this uh, latest uh, two strands of malware yeah so these latest two would be a good example of like more criminal based organizations there could be a government uh, linkage but we don't know um, but more hacktivists like doing mm -hmm. stuff absolutely pipe dream um, would be more again kind of a, a framework uh, and so when I look at Pipe Dream, that is a true state level capability that may one day proliferate into mm. criminals. These other two are more criminal level capabilities. Um, and so, long story short, the concern of a Pipe Dream getting to criminals still hasn't happened. It's just looking at sort of the, the forecast of the future, it's a very obvious thing to happen. And it's historically happened in IT security for every malware, every capability that once started at a government or state level eventually proliferated to criminals. Okay, so one last question about the cyber threat landscape before we move into other sort of control topics. Um, what would be the motivations of cyber criminals in the OT space, yeah. Bes besides ransomware, of yeah. course? Yeah, so the motivations on targeting OT are, are pretty broad. Um, there are some that do it for a political agenda, right? The hacktivist type stuff. We saw uh, attacks in the water sector where a uh, hacktivist group wanted to go and, and sort of protest Israel's uh, uh, conflict in Gaza. Uh, and so they were hacking Israeli-based vendors that were providing uh, control elements mm -hmm. into water services, as an example. And it was to get a message out, to scare the public and to get a message heard. Um, there's some that do it for financial gain. Um, ransomware is, is a great example of that. Extortion, and you know, not just ransomware, but hey, um, we're not going to let you operate your plant unless you pay us mm. um, to uh, sort of release control back to you. There's also intellectual property theft, and there are plenty of criminals that work very carefully with governments, and there are governments out there that would love to get certain intellectual property. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think intellectual property is just a trade secret or here's like a recipe, but it's not always that. A lot of times in the cases we see intellectual property is how did you take cheap quality inputs and make high quality outputs? Mm -hmm. how, what, how did you engineer the manufacturing facility or the technology to actually be able to produce what you're doing? Uh, and that's very core intellectual property. And then, of course, there's some people that are just criminals that <laughs> want to hurt people and want to cause chaos. Mm. And when you target IT, you talk about data theft, you talk about credit cards and PII and health yeah. records. When you talk about OT, you can kill people. That's right. And, and, and unfortunately, that's the realm we live in. Is oh, right. Sure. Okay, so it's ego-based um, kind of A wide range of things. Right. Are they working okay. with a government or not? Is there a conflict ongoing mm -hmm. or not? Are they trying to support a conflict? Is there right. something going on between Russia and Ukraine and I'm a hacktivist group? And well, I want to I want to help out as well. It's just there's a ideologies wide as ideology. Well. Yeah. Right. Yes. So Robert, yeah, you mentioned yesterday that we don't have, we don't really talk too much about the good news, right? Mm -hmm. That we have in this space. So, and you brought an example of is it Voltex, is it? Or? Uh, uh, Volsite, yeah. yeah. There's a group, group that targeted uh, electric power sites in North America. So there's a lot of uh, good lessons, uh, positive lessons yeah, that sure. we learned from that. For I, sure. There's a bunch of companies that did get compromised. It is a serious threat, but there's a bunch of companies that the adversary was unsuccessful in targeting them because they did the security discussions that we're talking about, um, the five critical controls kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just think as an industry, there's almost this... Um, excitement of, oh my gosh, it was a big attack, did you hear? You know, and so that people share the news mm -hmm. about that or write articles about that. What doesn't get in the news is, oh, the lights are still on. You know, no, no, there's no, no news article that's like, thanks power company, the lights are still on, yeah. good job today. Uh -huh. You get the article on, oh, the power's out. And so in the same context with, with cyber attacks, we don't often hear about or mm. celebrate the fact that there's a lot of winning taking place. There's a lot of defense teams in this case as well in Voltsite where the companies put in the security controls and won. Mm -hmm. And the adversary kept trying to get in, trying to get in, trying to get in, and was unsuccessful. And so I think it's worth noting because if we don't do that, people feel defeated. They feel mm -hmm. that it's not a winnable fight. They feel, well, if they want me, they'll compromise me anyways. And it's, no, that's not accurate. There are plenty of, of teams that have shown that you can stand up to even very sophisticated state actors by doing security fundamentals. Out of, out of critical infrastructure, we do not do a very good job of celebrating our wins on a daily basis. Mm. So at a people level, it's something that a colleague of ours, Mike Asante, really pursued the how are we going to recognize the people who have dedicated life to mission and everything yeah. that they've done from a service and a critical infrastructure perspective, mm -hmm. cybersecurity, and he's really started kind of a program of recognition that is now named after him. That is a at a people level. When we go down to at the process and at the plant, you walk in and you see signs everywhere of 
it's been 725 days since we've had a safety incident. We don't have one. It's been X days since we've had a cybersecurity incident. And the people that are all involved in making sure that happens and the process continues to run safe, reliable, secure, mm. we don't do a great job of celebrating those wins, but every day we have wins all over the place. This is an area where these environments should be easier for us to defend. If we're looking, if we have staff, mm. if we're training and preparing them, we are better enabled to win this fight than we are the IT battles. Thank you.